Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the parts that I've been printing in my business. This is a home-based business, one-man operation. So obviously I have to try to operate as efficiently as I can. These are some of the various parts that I've been 3D printing for different products that I'm manufacturing. And um, all of these particular parts that you see here have been printed with uh, these two printers. So I do have a pretty good uh, number of parts that I can print with these smaller printers and I'll explain a little bit today why I'm using the smaller printers instead of some of the larger ones. I have um, several other printers to choose from um, ANET uh, uh, printers, uh, Ender 3, uh, I have some from Gitex, Troxy just uh, a lot of different types and sizes. Uh, I think my largest is 330 by 330 millimeters, where this one is only 180 by 180, and this one is 110 uh, diameter. But even at that, most of these parts, a lot of these parts will print on this little, uh, Model price Delta printer. It won't print this part and it won't print this part. Um, but most everything else that you see here uh, it won't print this one. But most of the others it will, it is able to print them. So um, the King Room printer, KP3, that I'm using here. Um, of course prints all of these and some other parts too that I have that I make that are a little bit larger. Then when I get into the larger parts obviously then I'll have to go to a, a 200 by 200, 220 by 220, 300, 300 or my, I, excuse me, I do have a 400 by 400, that's my largest printer. And, um, but I can go to those larger printers for those parts. But since most of my parts are the smaller ones, I want to make as many of them as I can, as efficiently and economically as I can. Uh, and that's one reason that these two printers are favorites of mine for printing the smaller, some of the smaller parts. Um, a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of the King Room KP3 and the Monoprice Mini Delta. Um, on this KP3, uh, one thing I like about it, it does come with a magnetic uh, build plate, so it's easy to remove parts. It comes with a 24 volt, 15 amp power supply, 360 watts of power, where the power supply that comes with the monoprice is an inline uh, power supply and that power supply is 12 volts 5 amps for basically 60 watts so 360 watts versus 60 what difference does that make it makes a lot in the preheat uh, this printer can preheat in a very short period of time it takes much longer to preheat the monoprice because of the limits of the power supply. It has to alternate back and forth try building the temperatures for the nozzle and the bed on it. So once it's preheated though, that's not an issue. I'll just let you know that it does take longer when you're first starting up. But after that, the power supply seems to be able to keep the temperatures uh, through the print process. Uh, adequately. Uh, another thing about the printers with uh, uh, King Rune, it comes with these roller 
um, bases for your filament, which is really nice because it's adjustable, and if you have a larger roll of filament or wider roll, it will adjust to that. On the Monoprice, it has the filament holder on the back here, and it will also hold uh, wider reels as well as the short one. Um, I do like that because it's behind here, it's attached, it feeds well, and it creates a smaller footprint with the Monoprice. The footprint with the King Room because of the detached power supply and the stand, it takes up a lot more space. And I'll be showing you that in a minute because uh, my latest project has been figuring out a way to get a lot of these printers in a small area since I'm very limited here at my home. And uh, so I've been working on a little project to try to condense it more. If you look at uh, one of my videos, I have a couple of them showing where I have these king rooms on a table over about an eight foot area where I can put seven printers uh, side by side on top of a table in an eight foot area. Uh, that's, that's very good to be able to get that many printers in a small area like that. Uh, however, I still need something better than that. And I've come up with something that, uh, like I said, I'll show you in just a minute. A few more things about these printers that I've found, uh, other than this one having less workspace than this and uh, taking a little bit longer to preheat, they both seem to print a fairly equal quality of, of parts once they're adjusted and set up. This one comes pretty much like you see it. There's no assembly. It's pre-assembled. Take it out of the box, plug it up, uh, put your filament holder on, and you're pretty much ready to start printing. With the King Rune, you do have two, two main pieces and have to put this boom on, attach it here. I have a video showing the assembly. Uh, and in that video, it shows me unpacking the printer, assembling it, and having it ready to start printing in less than 10 minutes. So it's a very fast assembly on this one, too. And that's an advantage. I have some printers that I've spent hours uh, assembling, and uh, that gets a little frustrating sometimes. Uh, on the other, let me look at my notes here and see. Uh, this one is self-leveling. So once you start your print job, it self-levels and you don't have to worry about it. With King Room, you do have to level it. However, it has um, leveling software or uh, assisted leveling software that allows you to, uh, just by the touch of a button, position the nozzle at four different corners and in the center so you can sit there and just push the button and have your paper for gauging it but you still have to manually adjust the um, the screws on the print bed. Um, oh one other thing this the King Room does have a filament uh, brake sensor <coughs> where the Monoprice does not Another difference between the two printers is that the King Room does have a touch screen, which is pretty nice. It helps you navigate a little faster. This one has a manual uh, three button um, screen where you push the buttons to advance the menu and so forth and do your selections. And uh, again, it does not have a filament brake sensor. So uh, you can add one to it, but it doesn't come with it on the monoprice. So that's the big difference between those. Uh, now let me show you what I promised in the beginning 
a uh, little project I've been working on so you can see what, what I came up with. Okay, here's my little project I've been working on. Okay, what I've done here, I took a shelf that I purchased online. I think the shelf was about 70 or 80 dollars. Assembled it and was able to come up with three areas where I could put these printers. I took some of the uh, Monoprice printers and found out that I could put four of them across here and uh, where the king room I barely had room to get one of those on here in the same space that I could put two of the monoprice so if I had all uh, monoprice printers on here I could get 12 on here at one time and I attached this power strip this is just a inexpensive power strip that I picked up uh, actually at Harbor Freight Tools on sale for about $15 and zip tied it to the corner here and I bring my power around to that. I also have a bottom shelf where I can keep filament, store filament and also up here on the top shelf. So it's pretty convenient. The thing I like about it is that you have access to the controls on all these printers but then you can turn it around and you can see when you go to the back side you have access to the SD slots you also have access to the uh, filament spools where you can load filament and change that. So by having a portable, having this on a portable casters, I have carpet in here which makes it harder to move, but in an environment where you're on a solid floor, it will work a lot better. My plan is to have several of these and to be able to slide them against a wall and have multiple ones along that wall and when I need to change filament or change parts on one of them I just pull that one unit out into the open area and uh, I can get to the front and the back very easily. That's one of the things I want to show you that I've been working on and we'll be firing it up and I'll do a video showing you the printers operating and we'll see how it all works out. Well, that's about it for today. I have several new videos that will be coming out shortly uh, showing some of these uh, printers, how I'm utilizing them, trying to get more efficiency out of them for uh, manufacturing of the various parts. Until then, thank you for watching. Uh, leave any comments if there's anything that uh, you'd like to for me to explain or add to these videos, let me know. I'd be glad to do that. Thank you again for watching.